I'm here in the Malaysian capital, Kuala Lumpur, heading toward the starting point of our square mile. I've lived here for some 13 years now, since the tail end of the Asian financial crisis. And this area has undergone massive changes in that time. Many of the physical changes are plain to see. The century-old administrative buildings converted into museums and other uses. Other colonial buildings lying vacant or worse. New rail lines weaving among the high-rises that are constantly sprouting up. But the social impact of those changes is less obvious and something I'm keen to explore. Because our square mile is not a defined geographic area, I've decided I'm going to plot it out on Google Earth just to keep us honest. Okay, from the colonial district across to the Malay Kampung in the shadow of the Twin Towers, and down to the Sharia Court, past the old railway station. And that's our square mile. As a starting point, I'm choosing a spot near the 100-year-old mosque that sits at the site of the first settlement in Kuala Lumpur, the city's birthplace. Kuala Lumpur means muddy estuary in the Malay language, so it's little wonder that people here call it KL instead. This is Dataram Merdeka, or Independence Square, and it was here some 53 years ago that the colonial power, Britain, lowered the Union Jack for the last time as Malaysia gained its independence. And over the past half century, Malaysia has earned a reputation of being a modern, moderate Muslim country. And I'm wondering in particular how the role of women in the country has changed in that time. Just a couple of blocks away is a Muslim shopping district I noticed that most of the people working in the shops and running the stalls are women. I put my mediocre Malay language skills to work to chat with a couple of them. Then, then, musti, then, swami, kerja juga? Security, security. Oh, security. Then, siapa dapat gaji paling tinggi? Which is about 300 US dollars. This woman rents her own stall. Berapa lama kerja di sini? Saya kerja di sini sudah ada 30 tahun. 30 tahun? Ya, Dari mana ini, Pak? Uh, saya asal Kanada. Oh, Kanada. Uh, berapa sewa setiap bulan? Ini sewa saya uh, 2,000 setengah. So, oh, sudah sewa by total, kita ada yang dah bersih dalam 15 ke macam itu lah. Uh, macam itu, dah tak ada banyak. Sebab so, like, kita jual macam ini, ada masa kita boleh jual mahal, ada masa uh. kita jual murah, macam itu lah, tak tentu. Uh. Suami pun dia buat apa? Ah, suami saya dia besar tentera sekarang. Dia ami. Ya, ami. Okey. Okey. Terima kasih banyak. Okay, okay. After all her costs, okay. she explained she makes about $600 a month, which is quite a bit more than a woman clerk working for the government might make. Hi. Pagi. <laughs> These days, most Muslim women here wear the headscarf or tudung as it's known, but that wasn't always the case. Really, the trend toward greater conservatism only started after the Iranian Revolution in 1979, as throughout much of the Muslim world. But even today, the headscarf is in no way obligatory for Muslim women here. Across the street there is the old railway station. It's now pretty much deserted. And behind me is KL Sharia, or Islamic court. Malaysia operates an unusual system. It has both secular courts and Sharia courts. Sharia law basically only applies to family matters such as marriage and divorce. And it also only applies to Muslims. 
the Islamic courts were one of the last all-male bastions. But last year, the government appointed the first two women judges. Little over half of Malaysia's people are Muslim Malays. The next biggest ethnic group are the Chinese, who make up about a quarter of the population. This is the main street of Kuala Lumpur's Chinatown, home to a famous night market. These days, most of the goods are consumer items of dubious origin. The customers are tourists, and the workers are foreign migrants. It's a public holiday, so busloads of Indonesian and South Asian migrant workers from construction sites and factories are flooding into Chinatown for their day off. Chinatown is no longer the center of the city's Chinese community, with most of them having moved to more outlying areas. For some of the remaining locals, that flight hasn't been positive. <laughs> So I went in search of the heart of the Chinese community, and that's usually a temple. This one isn't easy to find, though not exactly well signposted, and down a nondescript back alley. But there are some fantastically colorful slices of Chinese culture still left here in this neighborhood, like this Chinese temple here. And the great thing about Chinese temples is that they're very open to visitors and even cameras coming in to have a look. My visit to Chinatown reminded me of a person I'd like to meet, a woman who's taken an aspect of traditional Chinese culture and gone mainstream with it. I'll be meeting her after the break.